Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Nailis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our 5-minute review playlist. In previous videos, we talked about neonatal conjunctivitis, meconium aspiration syndrome, transient tachypnea of the newborn, amniotic fluid embolism, superior vena cava syndrome, familial adenomatous polyposis, hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer, and other topics. Today, it's time to talk about the ear. Acute otitis media. Auto means ear. Media means the middle ear. Itis, itis, acute inflammation, pay attention. Redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Ruber, calor, tumor, dollar, functual, let's say. Hence, medicosis perfectionalis. Let's talk about a brief anatomy of your ear. Here's your lovely ear, external ear, middle ear, and inner ear. Externa media and interna. Any one of them can develop inflammation. So we have otitis externa, otitis media, and otitis interna. In otitis externa, where do you think the effusion will be? In the outer ear. How about in otitis media? In the middle ear. And in interna, the effusion will be in the inner ear. The external ear includes the ear penna or the auricle, and then the external auditory canal or meatus. Then we have the membrana tympanicum or tympanic membrane or the eardrum. Who said that doctors are not creative? Then we have the middle ear, three small bony ossicles, the malleus, the incus, the stapes, or the hammer, anvil, and stirrup, respectively. If you do not know what a stirrup is, that's because you're a snowflake born yesterday, not to mention the hammer and the anvil. There is a connection between your middle ear and your nasopharynx, which is the part of your pharynx behind your nose. Remember that the pharynx has three parts. Behind your nose, it's the nasopharynx. Behind your mouth is the oropharynx. Behind the larynx is the laryngopharynx. The communication or the connection between the middle ear and the nasopharynx is via the ostation tube, or the auditory tube, or the pharynx tympanic tube or the tympanopharyngeal tube. After that, you have the inner ear. Balance and hearing. The balance is by three semicircular canals, utricle and saccule. As for the hearing, it's by the cochlea, which includes the most sensitive organ of corti. Otitis media is inflammation of the middle ear. Otitis media could be acute or chronic. Redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function versus not really. I just have a long otitis media or recurrent otitis media. Where the flip did it come from? Usually upper respiratory tract infections from the nasopharynx into the middle ear. Thank you, eustachian tube. Or could be from direct extension, or could be just from the blood. Risk factors include exposure to cigarette smoking. And infants who are being fed by drinking a bottle while lying down. Just letting nature take its course. It's called gravity. Types of otitis media. Acute otitis media, otitis media with effusion, and chronic otitis media. In acute otitis media, there might be effusion that is purulent, pus. But in otitis media with effusion, the effusion is usually serous or mucinous, no pus. What is the triad of bacterial organisms that can lead to otitis or sinusitis for that matter? Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenzae, or Morexella catarralis? Remember Streptococcus pneumoniae, for example? It leads to what? Mops, meningitis, otitis media, pneumonia, and sinusitis. Acute otitis media, more common in the young. Why? Because their eustachian tube is shorter, straighter, and more horizontal, i.e. it's easier for infections to spread from the upper respiratory tract into their middle ear. Usually viral in origin, but before you know it, it's secondary bacterial infection. And when the patient presents to the doctor, it's usually a bacterial infection, Strepnomo haemophilus influenzae moraxella catarralis. Since the vaccine for haemophilus influenza covers the type of all influenzae, if you're unvaccinated, it's probably type B. But if you are vaccinated, it's probably the non-type of all Haemophilus influenzae, statistically speaking. The patient presents with history of upper respiratory tract infection, ear pain, maybe ear effusions, because it's all about redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. On physical exam, the tympanic membrane is bulging, retracted. And when you do the pneumatic insufflation otoscopy, there is decreased mobility of the eardrum. And of course, it's inflamed, so redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. The effusions are in the middle ear, and they are purulent. If the eardrum has ruptured, then the effusions will escape from the middle ear, and you will see them in the external ear as well. 
Diagnosis is made clinically with the help of otoscopy and pneumatic otoscopy. If a sample is sent to the pathologist, we'll find edema, hyperemia, and uh, polymorphonuclear cells, i.e. neutrophils, because it's an acute inflammation. Management. Medical versus surgical. Medical. Antibiotics. Most patients will benefit from amoxicillin. That's the first line. Did not help? Try amoxicillin with clavulinic acid, which gives it more coverage because clavulinic acid is a beta-lactamase or penicillinase inhibitor. If the patient is allergic to penicillins, then we give clindamycin or azithromycin. If everything failed and it's a recurrent chronic otitis media, Nothing seems to help, then surgical options include meringotomy. Meringo is the eardrum. Otomy is to cut, so we cut an incision in the eardrum so that when the effusions build up, they escape. Or we can place a tympanostomy tube to drain those effusions. Complications of acute otitis media, since it's an infection, it can spread to the mastoid bone, mastoiditis, to the meninges covering the brain and spinal cord, meningitis, brain abscess, cerebral venous sinus thrombosis. The abscess doesn't have to be in the brain, it could be an abscess in the ear. Scar formation, tympanic membrane rupture, you will see the effusions in the outer ear, and conductive hearing gloss. In acute otitis media, the tympanic membrane is bulging, and we lose the visibility of the normal cone of light. It's absent because of the severe bulging of the eardrum. If you want to learn about otitis media with effusion, check out the upcoming video in this 5 minutes review playlist. If you want to learn about amoxicillin, amoxicillin clavulinic acid, clindamycin, macrolides like azithromycin, download my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. It will help you with antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications. To learn about endometritis, cardioamnionitis, mastitis, breast abscess, asymptomatic bacteriuria, cystitis, pyelonephritis, vaginitis, etc., download my OBGYN high yields course. And don't forget that mumps virus can lead to oophoritis and orchitis. There are more than 1,500 free videos on this channel, plus 300 premium videos when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Smash like, subscribe, hit the bell, you can support the channel here or here, go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases, or if you'd like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard, this is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.